today's video we are going to build some hinges so these are highly modified this is off of a like a 90 model buick park avenue riviera le sabre 86 to 91 92 something um anyway these have been modified from the stock form i believe the spring sits closer to this and i believe that this is wider i've cut this down 10 years ago uh, modified this so i don't quite remember but i'm going to make new ones because you can't really find the i can't i don't know somebody might be able to find these but um i do see a set on ebay for 350 dollars and i don't want that i will not spend 350 dollars on this so this is the factory hinge right here that is how the factory hinge works it is bolted back here and just swings like that so mine i've cut it off and i made a little hook sharpened it whatever and then i welded this plate on and then where it hooks it's taking a beating right here so it would probably be good to reinforce this hole I've reinforced just the top but it looks like the bottom might need to be reinforced I added a bump stop right here and I just kind of formed that and my skills are better than they were so hopefully I can make a prettier weld than that I did this hood and then I had to alter these whenever I started tubbing this and putting my 20s on I had 18s these worked fine with 18s but i didn't even have a, a wheel well this side doesn't have a wheel well still but the plan was um to do all of it like that i just never got around to it because my clutch was in the way and i've got a fix for that too now so once this truck actually gets fixed hopefully it'll be a lot better than it is now um so I am going to just make this up as I go, but I found a spring that is for a lawnmower. And that spring is right here. I can grab the part number and insert it into this video somewhere, either in the description or I'll post it on screen. And um, that spring is very close to this, so I'll make sure that it works and uh, during this video and then what i will have to have is this bolt rod something and then some nuts and angle the nuts where that spring will fit and it won't ever pop off and clean that edge there up just weld that grind it smooth looks like that is half inch square tubing and looks like i have put a washer on and bolted that in and bolted that in these are bolts that must be threaded and this looks like eighth inch flat steel I drilled a hole to put the spring on and then I'll have to figure out how to uh, bolt it to the hood in the correct location but this one I believe that is the factory uh no that that is the factory bolt for the fender so it doesn't really matter as long as this oops, as long as this pivots in this spot and you get the length right to here that's really all that matters and then you need to shut this from the center you can't really shut this from one side because I have removed the bar that goes from side to side that keeps it to where one side doesn't move from the other side so you have to close it from the center to keep them both 
going the same distance or you will miss your holes back here and scratch your fender um and i put rubber bump stops right here and they just touch the bumper so that you do not scratch anything once the hood is open okay hopefully that was where you could understand it so first thing i'm going to do is get some measurements off of this to the pivot point to the pivot point and find some bar and find some stock for these tubes that appear to be threaded um at least that one all right i'll cut you back on this bar is going to be seven and three quarters that actually can go anywhere you can be longer or shorter but we're just going to go with what we've got here because it works and the end of this is magnetized it's supposed to really help it helps sometimes and it's hindering me right now because it's sticking to things um center of this bolt we'll go say it's sticking so i'm gonna try to go right here to center down here i'm gonna hold my phone right here so that we can visually see it and i don't have to fight anything it is 11 and 3 8 to the center of where it pivots to the center of that bolt up there okay so i'm going to take those measurements and i'll go ahead this doesn't have to be this wide really i did it for strength we'll we've got three and a quarter from outside of that bar to middle of that bar i'm going to use half inch square tubing i found a stick of it in the shop so i still need to find these tubes um that one's threaded on both sides I need to figure out what i'm going to do about that but this one shouldn't be hard at all to come up with looks like i just threw some threaded rod down into a tube welded it screwed a nut on and then screwed another nut on angled those to hold the spring that looks fairly easy i'll go ahead and take these measurements over to the table and get to working on that all right i took my half inch square and i hammered it down and i'm going to weld a three eighths nut onto that all right so I need 11 and 3 eighths. So there we are. It's pretty close. And what I'm going to do is weld a nut on this end. So I will have to cut it back to where the nut is going to fit on to there like that. So I'm going to cut this mark and then weld that nut onto there. And what I've done is I have got this nut welded onto one side like that. And I'm going to drill this out to 3 8 to where it is no longer threaded. That is really hot still. And whenever I put this on, the head of this bolt will not extend very far past the bar. And on this side, I'm going to do the opposite to where the nut is on 
this side of the bar to offset it just a little bit. And then I'll cut you back on. Alright. Got that welded on. And I got this one cleaned up. And then I bored my hole out with a 3 8 drill. And now what I've got is I can put a 3 8 bolt into there. Very tight. I'll pause you. Okay. So that's pretty tight, and now I've got this, it is a, I don't know what they call these, it's a long bolt, uh, long nut, threaded, it's, um, looks like it's going to be one and three quarters of an inch long, it's basically just a nut, so I'm going to screw this on to there. All right, once I get this put together permanently, I can go ahead and use some Loctite. Not the permanent Loctite, but the Loctite that will allow it to stay and be removed. Because I do not want that coming back off. So, the head of this doesn't stick out much past the bar. That's what I was after. And so right here, I have now mimicked that. And it's not quite as wide, but that's fine. And if you put this all the way up in there, it will pivot at the correct spot here. And I have put a mark with a Sharpie right there where that bar needs to be put on. That will give us the correct spring rate with our spring. And I will give you a measurement for that in just a second. I might have said earlier in the video that it didn't matter how far this was. I, if I did say that, uh, I was wrong. So it is going to matter because the spring rate has to be correct. So we are going to go from the center of this bolt. to eight and a quarter to the center of where this will bolt. This needs to be pretty straight. I'm gonna just hold that on there. This is uh, it's gonna be pretty easy to get straight so I'm going to weld this to the bar right there. And I've got that mounted to the edge of that bar so it will be the same distance as far as this distance it will be the same so I'll get to welding on that alrighty got that welded on right there while that was cooling off I went ahead and started on this other one and I've cleaned my weld up a little bit clean this up I actually drilled this one out what I've got to do now is clean this one up like I have this one and drill this one out like I have this one and we can put our bolt that is very tight but that's the way I want it so that it doesn't wobble the hinge will be fairly tight and that right there is what I want All right, I'll cut you back on in a minute. So now, I've got it looking like this. And I have to have a bolt to go here, but I want it angled to hold the spring on. So I built a bolt that looks like this. And whenever I screw it on here, it will look like this and then I can hook my spring on like that and I can pull my spring 
up to the plate that I need up here. And knowing that the spring is going to be hooked here, I don't want to weld that. So I'll weld this side to make sure that bolt does not move. That's what we've got. Bolt is welded in. Now I'm going to put this bolt and do the same thing on this side. All right, we came back to the truck to show you what we've got. If I put that all the way up to there, then you can see that it is going to pivot exactly where we wanted it. This is going to be exactly where we wanted it. I'll have to set it up here crooked to get it to stay. And the spring. So the spring is going to have to come up to a plate right there. But... We are going to have to put this brace right here for support. So that brace can be anywhere. It doesn't have to go all the way up here. So what I plan on doing now is I will put the spring on and I can look and see where a bracket could be without hitting the spring here. So I could just come from here to there with just a piece of metal really and that will give it the support that it needs. Okay, I welded a little piece of eighth inch plate in there. That should give it the strength that it needs. And I believe this part is done at this point. Let's take it to the truck and check it out. All right, now that is connected to this part. So what I've got to do is come off of this top part. That plate is connected to this part, so... I just need to come off of that with a plate similar to that, make a bolt point for the hood, and make a point for the spring to attach. Alright, so I've decided to make a cardboard template. <clears throat> I can get measurements for you off of this. Let's see if I can video this here. So I just put my bolt points, top and bottom, and put a mark right here where that is going to go. And then I came off right here where my spring is, and I'll just bend that where my hood is bent. So three and a quarter, and basically two and three eighths. This doesn't have to be exact, but the spring needs to be really close. So let's go ahead and mark where the spring is at. So basically, you need to know where this bar comes through in accordance to where the spring is located. And we have three and a quarter inches. All right. And this is eighth inch steel, and it is a four inch wide piece. I've cut this corner out for these. This is big enough to do one of these. If I hadn't cut that corner out, I could have probably use this for two of these but whatever so this is going to be four inches wide so that you know that 
and I am going to trace around my template and I will cut this out. All right, on my truck here, I have had to shave my fender down right here and bend it over because this was dragging. So to get away from that, I want to have this bar further than what this truck is. It is about, it's hard to measure, it's about one and a half if you look directly on it. So I want to probably get two inches. I'm going to shut that door because I've got the air conditioner on in here. It got really hot earlier. So I've measured two inches from the edge right here. And I went ahead and cut this down from where it was. So it's not as wide right here where the spring needs to fit because when, let's see, this, this fits here, and this screws into that. So when that's put together, the spring is that distance away and I wanted to keep it close to that same distance back here instead of way out here and make the spring do like a funny angle. I felt like that, I felt like that was necessary. So I did have this mounted there and that was not going to work because that was on the wrong side of my two inch mark. I need to be on this side. So at this point I am going to push this in some and see if I can get it lined out there all right this is taking a lot longer than I had anticipated so the metal right here was hitting my spring so I had to cut that down and now I am clearing the spring got this lined up it fits in a pocket right here in this factory hood really nice and I have outlined where my bolts need to go so I know where to put some nuts I'm gonna weld nuts on the inside here something's fighting me but you can see now the spring should clear everything as it goes up here. I'm not going to pull that tight just yet because it might go flying. I think at this point, at this point I need to go ahead and put in some weld bungs or some nuts. Whatever I can find. Probably three-eighths. I'll figure it out in just a minute. I found some M8 with a 1.25 thread bolts and these flange nuts. You can drill a hole and then I need to turn my welder down. But I left it turned up too high. So um, I blew out since I had my welder turned up too high. But you can weld the flange nut onto the metal. So I drilled a half inch hole and then I can set that nut right in the hole and then weld it up. I'm going to have to, that was in the middle of another hole anyway, so I'm going to clean that up. And that one should weld in pretty decent, but it would be stronger if I cleaned that hole up. I might do that. All right, I'll cut you back on in a second. Well, it's not pretty, but it'll clean up pretty good. 
and the bolt holes line up really good. I got the nuts all welded in on the, the hood here. This hood has kicked my butt. Everything I've done to this hood has fought me the whole way. So the spring clears everything. So with the hood shut, the spring will be similar to this. I don't know if it'll be all the way. And then when it's the hood's open, it will be similar to this. It's pretty strong. I think it'll work fine though. It bound up for a minute, but it, it's not binding now. All right, I'll cut you back on later. All right, on the hinge, if we bring it out two inches, it's going to clear by about three-eighths. So it's going to work perfectly. It should never rub and scratch paint. So, go back over here. I was using this as a table, and you're not supposed to do that. That will dent your hood. Whatever panel you're working on, laying things up here all the time. So, don't do that. Don't do what I'm doing. And I'm going to try to quit. Um, I got this put back on and tight. The nuts on the bottom of this are fit pretty good. And now I'm working on this other piece. I'm shaving it down right here on that edge. I still got to clean that up with the grinder a little bit. I drilled my hole where it needs to be. And I will have to bend this tab down right here. Like that one is. And what that will do is it will space the spring away from the engine bay. Anything in the engine bay. Oh, sorry. So what that'll do is it'll pull that spring down just a little bit more and try to keep it out of the way. It's going to get pretty close right here. Hopefully there is no rubbing. If it does, I'll figure that out. Maybe put a piece of vinyl or something right there. But I'm going to keep moving forward on this. So I'm going to finish shaping this one and then bend that over and then figure out exactly where that needs to be welded in. I'll put a mark and get that looking like that one. Now I'm ready to make my next piece, which is going to be the part that actually attaches to the fender and core support, whatever. I will get measurements of this for you, but I marked both bolts. This one can be pretty much anywhere, but on the Nissan hard body, that lines up with the front bolt point that was made factory. I'm almost certain of that. Now, before you mount this on your hood, if you're doing a vehicle, um, you'll probably want all of this built and then mount your hinge anywhere in here that this will angle down so it will line up and be able to open <clears throat> if you move this more forward you could actually make this open up more tilted or if you pull this back then it would be more angled that way because the front of the hood can only go so far. So you'll have to do some measuring and calculating of your own. And then also right here is a stop that will have to be made as well. And I think what I'm going to do is mount 
my bumper and my hood onto my pathfinder and then build that stop because it could also these could go down too low and the front of your hood could be down too low so you will want to put a blanket on something a jack stand or whatever you can find not to scratch your hood so you use a blanket but uh, you can get your hood the height that you want and get your tilt where you want and then put these stops in that's probably how I'm going to do it I kind of make things up as I go where'd my little cardboard piece go I cut it that dude out and I had it sitting oh my goodness story of my life right there all right so this will basically go under here so that bolt will be there and I'll have to make another bolt right here and whenever I get this fit where I want get my holes drilled I can flip this over and weld nuts on the back side this is an m6 with a 1.0 pretty sure is what the thread and everything is on that so if i line that up with that bolt and the edge of my cardboard is right at that lip i'll make sure that this fits under here it's going to hit that bolt right there on the back side but other than that it's just going to hit right here which on this truck it appears that i have notched that back just a little bit that's doable so it appears this is going to fit and i got to make sure that this tab that i've got coming down is going to be long enough and it is so now all I have to do is mimic this onto a piece of steel, probably eighth inch. That might be eighth inch, but that's what I'm going to build it out of is eighth inch plate. And then I will bend this over. First I'm going to make sure that it looks like it will fit onto my hood here. I'm not really going to know too much, but we'll call that good right there. I need to, uh, need to find out exactly on, so this is my line where the bolt was, but I need to find out exactly where my line needs to be this direction, and then I can get that more lined out there. I'll cut you back on with some measurements. So my plan is to just cut this. That's the factory hinge. I'm going to cut that right there. And then round that off. And that will act as a hook. So I can grab the firewall with that. And it will latch the hood down on the back. This is the plate that I hope will fit pretty decent to an image basically of that and what I did is I just held it up to the bolts right here that I have and I will get you measurements in just a minute and I put a mark on those and I'm going to use this stainless steel hardware I've been carrying these around I'm trying to video this here so what I did is I turned my light on my phone and I held this down there. I used a Sharpie and it fit right in there just like that. And I put that little dot right there. Whenever I knew that that line was lined up with that hole, I just stuck my Sharpie down in there and it worked great. I'm going to have to drill this hole out. I don't need threads in that. I don't have to worry about the back side because the way it's flat in there, it will it will pull that up tight and it'll be perfectly fine. 
And once I get a hole right there, I'm going to weld a nut on the back side M6 with a 1.0 thread. And then I will be able to bolt this in place right there. Once that is bolted into place, I've made this mark by using that mark. And what I will do is I will try to keep the same distance and I will make a X right here and then I will drill that out. With it bolted in tight here, I can drill that one and it should go right through that. Then I can take this bolt back out, turn this back over, and I can weld a nut right there and this will fit perfectly where I need it. And then I can put it in my vise and hit it with a hammer until I have a 90 degree like that. Then I'll cut you back on. Alright, I've made my plate. And it will go in here. And I've got the nut welded on the back side. Now I'm going to drill out for the M6 bolt. Just waller those threads out real nice. There's that word again, waller. We do that in Arkansas. So now that will fit and I'll be able to bolt this on the underside. We're getting some rain. I can hear it. It's not rained in a while. We really need some rain. Oh yeah. I wonder if I have my windows up in my truck. I wonder if those are gonna blow away. I'll cut you back on in a minute. You see that lightning? That's pretty awesome. All right, I gotta get wet for a second. Okay, at this point we've got it bolted in, so I'm going to drill my hole on this side. I'm gonna use the same drill bit. I'm gonna drill through the fender. I'm going to drill through this core support that goes back that the fender attaches to and I'm also going to drill through this eighth inch plate. I'm going to do that on both sides and I did not mark this side so I will have to take that back off. There is the fender. It's pretty awesome. Um, so I'm going to mark the other side and I'm going to drill both sides and then I will pull this plate back off and weld the nut on the other side of that. Okay, it is raining very hard, so hopefully you can hear me. What I'm gonna do is put the nut and the bolt together here. This is a flange nut that I had over here in a box. And my welder, my welding helmet is like, I can barely see through it, so I'm not doing a real good job welding these, but it just needs to stick and not ever come off. Nobody will ever see these. I am not concerned at all about the beauty of this weld. I am going to weld that. I put the, the nut and the bolt here about flush because I don't want anything to stick to either one of those. There's probably some paste or something that I could put on that or a piece of tape or something, but I'm just going to go ahead and weld a little bit around that and do both of those and I'll cut you back on and show you something okay my hinge will come out two inches from the edge of the hood wasn't it Okay, so roughly right there, my two inches is going to be right at the edge of that. So, whatever. Um, I can't, I can't turn this down and put a bolt directly into that. But that's okay. I can actually put a nut on that, so... Let's just go ahead and get some dimensions here. So from this front bolt, center of front bolt to center of this back bolt, we have five and a quarter inches. 
and center of front bolt to where the pivot point needs to be. If you look directly at it, it is right there. Um, five eighths, three and five eighths, roughly. It's actually not quite. That is straight down. It's not quite three and five eighths, but I mean, sixteenth ain't gonna kill you. So, um, that's what we've got on this one. Three and five eighths will definitely work. And on the hard body, that is gonna be your front fender bolt. That is what that is. So you can go off of that measurement. And on this truck, from the edge of where my hood will be to the pivot point is one and three eighths. That is not enough. So on this one, we're going two inches. Um, what I can do is just put a mark at my fender and then that will give me probably about the same these these hinges will give some but I don't want it too close if I'm too close I'm gonna rub on this and I don't want to rub on this if I do I'll end up having to beat it over and it doesn't really look all that great I'd rather have the factory edge right there so it's two inches right to the edge. It's hard to film this square, but it's two inches right to the edge of that. So if I was to just put a mark right there, and then I could build that out. I could put a nut or a washer, weld a washer and a nut, stack that up to the distance that I need to gain um, the rest of my two inches. I can just measure this from that mark to this edge and I'll know that I have to build it up that amount. So I wing this, which means I make this up as I go for the most part. And in these videos I'm sure you have seen me make a mistake and go back and repair my mistake best I can and just kind of throw it together. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this one in over here and I will just put a mark at the fender and from that mark to this edge is how much that I'll have to build that up and I can bend that over to a 90 build that up and then figure out how far I am from here to center of there and then let's just go ahead and do that while I'm doing measurements here let's see if I can film so you can see here all right center of that to basically where the fender bolts right there is gonna be one inch and one eighth if I can hold it still inch and an eighth and that's where it will be from top of fender and this is not gonna be top of fender We kind of need bottom of fender measurement, don't we? We're already sitting close to half. This is not rocket science, but what was that? I don't know what that noise was. We'll do there to the top of the bracket. You can just use whichever of these measurements that you want to use, I guess. We'll go from center right there, center, top of bracket, around three quarters. Let's just do three quarters. Three quarters, bolt point to the top. 
I'll cut you back on. I got these bent over. And it's a good thing nobody's really going to be able to see these because I don't like the way that looks. But I can easily come down three quarters and weld in. Remember these? This is what I cut off of what I did not need on that. That was there. And that just happens to be half of an inch. That's what I need to come out. Half of an inch. So what I'm going to do is grind this down. Flush with that. So I'll just knock that dude right there off. And I will weld that onto here. I'm going to try to come three quarters of an inch down. Drill a hole. And then weld that. And then that will be spaced out by half inch and it will pivot off of that and not rub on anything that is the plan we'll see all right i'll cut you back on okay that's what i've got it sticks out a little bit it's actually at a funny angle i'm going to see if it'll work hopefully it will that's what we've got went ahead and put a brace on the back nobody's really going to see that so it doesn't really care what it look. I don't really care what it looks like. So, um, it'll fit in like this, and it will stick out far enough to mate up to what I've got on the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this side in right there, and I will see if the hood will bolt on. All right, I was going to add a stop to make it to where it doesn't tilt as far but I need my bumper on here to be able to do that um, good thing is this bracket right here hits on my factory rubber stops right there that is pretty awesome I wish that I could say that I did that on purpose just look maybe no I really did that on purpose yeah we'll just say that all right so what I might do is just rig up a stop anyway even though my bumper is not on um, uh, I really don't need to do that I guess I'll just get my bumper and hope I don't scratch it. It's already painted. Um, I'll just go ahead and put the rubber bump stops on the hood. And I'll just show you as I do it. I'm going to show you on that hood. The hood does not close very good yet. It, these are all jacked up. They don't fit in there very well. It appears that I hit right there. I'm going to have to make some kind of guide. I don't want to weld in this new part of my shop. It's already getting dirty in here though. It's supposed to be a lot cleaner than this. I just got too many projects going. Um, I'm going to call it a night tonight. And I will think on this and figure out what I need to do first. Probably, I will put a plate right here and just plate over to here somewhere with a piece of angle iron or something, something to plate that and help guide that into that hole. And I will go from there probably, put a bumper on, get those bump stops here, put on. And then with it pressed against the bumper, I will know where to add a stop to this. You can see how it spins right here. It needs to be sitting here, but it goes too far. And how I did this truck is I, I put that plate right there. So you can lift the hood up and it will not allow it to tilt any more than that but if you need to tilt the other way it will 
and when it reaches there it stops just like that rubber bump stops right there you can get these for Jeeps these I found in the trash at my work they just throw this stuff away so I was able to pick those up and those touch the bumper bam all right I will I'll pick you back up tomorrow what a mess all right all right this has been in my enclosed car hauler for the last couple weeks probably and I just now got it out I'm gonna see if I can finish these hood hinges I see where I was at see if I can pick up where I left off I went over to tractor supply and I picked up some more of these this is a coupler this is a 3 8 bolt it's a basically a long nut and they call it a coupler Ooh, there it is all right so I have to put the bumper back on I chipped my paint whenever I put it on it hit my grill right here and so whatever I have to repaint the bumper um, Taiwan bumper brackets did not fit in here correctly I ended up having to shorten this one about close to 3 8 no I ended up having to shorten this one about three quarters of an inch and now that one on the driver's side is about a quarter of an inch off so I'm going to have to shorten it just a hair and then once the bumper is put on and bolted in I will know where I have to put the stops for the hood when it gets down to where it needs to stop I did put some rubber bump stops right here I welded a nut on the back side of the hood and those just screw in and those will touch the bumper you can make your bump stops almost touch your bumper by using the stops that I'm gonna have to weld in so that's what we're gonna do is maybe get it just a little bit away from the bumper where it's not actually laying on it all the time maybe it will barely touch and most of the weight will be on these hinges and uh, so my hood won't shut all of the way. The springs are not on there, so that did not open correctly. I forgot. So uh, this is going to have to be moved forward. So what I'm planning on doing is cutting those coupler things. I'm going to cut one in half, and I'm going to put it directly in front of this one basically just weld it to that one and to my bracket right here and just move this forward right there see if my hood will shut then I'm probably going to have to elongate this hole where it bolts to the hood to get me some adjustability here and uh, we'll go from there with it this is uh this has been fighting me so and I've now dented the hood a few times so I've got to go back and fix the hood it's down here where I put those bump stops is where I dented it I guess I remember putting two dents but whatever I've got to go back over it again so and I'm also fixing to start welding these doors up see if I can make a video on that I've got about five of these videos started I don't like editing them and I don't have anything really finished to finish a video so we'll see how far I can get there is lots of fine tuning fitment issues that I'm gonna have to overcome with this the hood was sitting too far forward on both sides I ended up elongating the holes this one was not gonna make it that side did line up but I noticed that the hood on this side with it open was sitting too high so I'm going to move this 
I'm going to weld this nut right there. I had to go to town and pick up a tool. I just got this from Harbor Freight and my other one had quit working so and that right there dug that out in just a matter of minutes just a few minutes I had both of those holes ready to weld a new nut in so I'm gonna go ahead and weld that back and bolt it back up to my hinge and then see how well it shuts how well it lines up with this fender on the front working on the hood here again I got several projects going but what I did is I shut the hood and I put these bump stops to where the hood is lined up with the top of the fender like it should be I've worked these fenders these are the cheap Taiwan fenders and I'm gonna have to body work these back out after bending them around but they're getting fairly lined up now after quite a bit of work but with the hood shut I raised the front up and I don't have any wheel wheels so I was able to reach up in here and mark with a sharpie where the bottom of the hood was and I put that mark to where it will be right in here so I want this is my bump stop that I'm planning to use so the bump stop should put should be put right there if I put that right there so at this point I am going to put that at that line and I will say that the hood the back of the hood does sit a little lower than this fender but this is fully adjustable I can just pull that off and put some washers or I can double nut that either way if I double nutted it I would put my bracket that comes off of here I'm gonna have an angle come down too for strength but then I can bolt that on and whenever I get it positioned where I want I could have a bolt I could have a nut on the bottom and a nut on the top and I could sandwich the two together onto that bracket and then I would have to loosen both of those nuts to make any adjustments in the hood or I could just stack washers most likely I'm just going to stack washers and call that good I can even get a, a thinner shim thinner than a washer but uh most likely I'll just do that oops sorry and uh I'm gonna try to do both sides I'm gonna look around at my metal and see what I can come up with as far as the bracket and I will once I figure that out I will get back with you I decided to build it just with some thin steel and it should work because everything else is built with thin steel and that holds up for like 40 years without any trouble so what I'm going to do is weld this right there. I've welded a nut on the back side. So that all I have to do is take this up and down, add washers or whatever I need to do. A jam nut or anything can be put in on this other side. I'm going to get that just a hair above that line and I already have a couple washers. It's not going to need to go any lower, but just in case, I do have some washers that I can remove. And I will weld that there. I ground that down to bare metal. And I will build another one of these out of this plate. This is 14 gauge steel. So, just throw that together like that. And then, uh figure out how to build a guide to guide this down into the hole all right so I've got the hood lined up good on the back on both sides fits real good right there the middle right here is a hair high and then it lines up again here 
last time that I put these Taiwan fenders on a hard body I had this exact same issue so I am going to go with the fender being warped or not warped but made incorrectly let me open this real quick and I'll show you what I've got all right that is a cobbled up looking weld it burned through and I just kind of filled it so I will probably clean that up with a little bit of either seam sealer or some body filler but this is going to be really strong if I wiggle this you can see it flexing here not my bracket so I am stronger than what the firewall is even with that thin wall metal that I used um, now I'm gonna probably uh, fit the front bumper and put the stop to where the hood will stop where it needs to and once that's fitted then I can start figuring out a way to stab these I'll probably end up welding a plate possibly and uh, welding a plate on top here and a plate on bottom the plate on bottom may actually just be a piece of angle iron to help guide that in angle iron probably going that way and then flat bottom I will figure that out probably tomorrow it's getting late again working after work so I'll catch you back on it's been several days since I've worked on this so I don't know what I was thinking I'm not going to be able to get the weight off of the front bumper the front bumper actually needs to sit back further than what it is but I will line that up later something's going on with um, the brackets or something but this is what I have built and what I'm going to do is put that right there not quite at that big of an angle I'm going to kick this in like that and what that will do is when I go to pick up on the front of the hood to shut the hood it will try to tilt this direction and with this mounted in on both sides that will stop the rotation of that and I will be able to shut the hood a lot easier and it will not get welded to this side it will get welded to this side so I cut that angle so that it will rest onto there fairly easy so I'm going to try to weld that side right there pretty solid and I will cut you back on the hood should shut pretty good after that I have put these in on both sides it's uh it's not pretty yet but once I figure out where I'm gonna put my trailer fenders in here I can clean these up and make them a lot better the plan is to make the radiator core support all the way to here bolt in so everything from here forward you remove the fender and then the wiring harness and unhook your radiator and all of that probably pull the radiator out and then unbolt your core support here and it will just come off I think that'll make it a lot easier to work on if something was to happen um, it's gonna be a little bit harder to build but it won't be terrible and uh, let's try to do that and I'll cut you back on okay I've got those welded in I'll show you how the hood works take all of the weight off of the bumper so I learned a little bit while I was doing this there's a little bit of slack in what I've welded in here 
and just a little bit you can't even hardly see it it might be actually slop in here but when you get down here it makes an incredible difference I'm just gonna go ahead and be okay with that maybe I can figure out a way to loosen the springs up a hair they're a little stiff it's not perfect I've got a little bit of give here I'm wiggling the hood back and forth and I can actually see this wiggling just a hair I'm gonna assume that everything is going to work so the only thing left to do now is clean this up and weld something on the top here and weld something here and I'll show you why I could probably shut this with one hand at this point and hold my phone you have to shut it from the very center oh I thought it was hanging up but it wasn't it was gonna go in so whatever um, back here it lines up really good but I've got a bump stop to keep it from going any further down but I don't have anything to keep it from coming any further up so now all I have to do is correct that and then the hood latch in the front should hold it and everything should be lined up and it shouldn't bounce flop any at all so I'm gonna probably just have to figure out back here it's going to need a little piece to keep it from ripping through the top. So I'll cap this off in the top and make sure that the hinge here will still fit into there. And then I will start looking at where I need to put a plate or something right here to keep it from coming up any higher. I'll probably end up airing the front of the truck up and putting a mark actually where that needs to be welded it probably will actually be needed uh, to be all the way back here so I can step it way back here up a little higher and just come down or something I'll figure that out in a minute I'll cut you back on all right got it all fixed up there is just a tiny tiny bit of play in this side but the hood is just a tiny bit low so what I can do is just raise the bump stop up in the rear and this side is just a hair low there is no play so really what I could do is I could shave this off just a hair more right here and it would fit right there real nice after paint this is probably going to continually be bare metal um, I have used door trim on that the uh, that crap you can buy from the auto parts store that just sticks on the edge of your door and I've used that before and it fell off but you could probably glue some of that on but this would have to be shaved down some more for the thickness of that and with that welded in that is probably eighth inch thick steel so that's going to be strong and I can trim this up a little bit cut it like right there and clean this up whenever I put my trailer fenders in if I turn this it will raise that just a hair 
and if I shave this and then raise this one just a hair which that one might have to put some kind of uh, thread um, not a Loctite that will hold it but a Loctite that will make it um, more uh, harder to turn or I could just double nut the bottom since I've got that nut welded I could just double nut the bottom and I wouldn't even have to worry about the thickness of these washers I could turn it anywhere I wanted and then double nut this back side that would be an easy fix really so I'll just shave this right here and it shuts really good now you have to shut it in the middle because factory these had a bar that went from side to side to keep it from doing this and not on that side so what mine has to do once I have a trailer fender, it will glide on the top of that trailer fender over to these. Slide right up into that hole. And bam. Everything's good. That lines up real good and uh, all I gotta do is just shave just a hair off this side and we will call it complete pretty straightforward I'm just gonna take a grinder with a flap disc and take off like a 32nd of an inch not hardly anything and uh, all right so there's that and there will be more to come soon on this build, so if y'all want to see more, just subscribe or whatever. So, uh, alright, and I'll catch you next time.